All right, going to be taking a look at a video this time dealing with the law of sines. Um, I'm going to show how to use it, show you what to use it for, show you how to check your answers when you get to the end of a question. So here we go with that um, and work on our TI, our calculator skills as well. So here we go. The law of sines, we're going to look about uh, when to use it. We're going to look about how it works. Uh, we're going to look at how to find sides, how to find angles, and lastly we're going to deal with how to check problems. Uh, first of all, the first thing you need to know is the formula. Basically it ends up looking like this. The sine of A divided by A, that means the sine of any angle divided by its opposite side is equal to the sine of any other angle divided by its opposite side. And since we're talking about a triangle, that's the same all the way across. Boils down to this, the sine of any angle divided by its opposite side will allow me to uh, find all three sides and all three angles as long as I have some important information. We'll talk about that here uh, in just a second. So the key to the law of sines, the law of cosines, the key was is that the side and the angle that were in the important positions were across from each other. In this case, uh, the sine of the angle has to be across from its opposite side. I need to have one of those pairs. These are solved by proportions. All right. Uh, when to use the law of sines? Well, the law of sines is available in two situations, or actually three. Uh, the first two, the main ones we're going to focus on for at least for today. Uh, the law, we, we talked about four cases, the side, 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 and side angle sides. These were both law of cosine situations. Today we're going to take a look at ASA and AAS and SSA. We're not going to work on SSA today even though this is still law of sines. These are law of sines. So ASA and AAS. Basically what it boils down to, for the law of sines to work, you have to have a pair of opposites. All right? So in two situations, first of all, in angle, angle, side, so let's just make up some numbers here. Say this is 45 here, this is 80 here, and this side over here is 13.4 millimeters. That's an angle, angle, side situation, and it's solvable using the law of sines. Once I have one more piece of information, I can use the law of cosines. Um, but I need to have one more side before that can actually happen. Obviously, I can use the 180 rule to finish out and find that angle there. And then I use um, the law of sines in order to solve for my remaining sides, x and y. And we'll look at an example here in just a minute. But the law of sines deal with, deals with a situation like this. This is pretty much the same as ASA because in both of these situations, the 180 rule for triangles comes into play. Um, because once I know two angles, I automatically know the third. So you can actually look at this picture and say, well, here's an ASA situation or an AAS, depending on which information is given to you. It doesn't matter. As soon as you know two of the angles, you automatically know the third. And then I can just immediately turn it into what I need to do. All right. Now, there is a caution. Um, actually, I want to do that here. Uh, I want to show how the law of sines works and give you a little bit of a caution. So I'm going to draw a quick triangle here. Uh, the law of sines works, and again, I'll just use the same angles from the last question, 45 degrees, 80 degrees, 55 degrees, and 13.7 millimeters. And I want to find x, and I want to find y. Uh, first of all, how the law of sines works is I need a pair. What I mean by a pair is I need a pair of opposite angles or opposite something. So in this case, I need the 80 and the 13.7 uh, because they're the basis for what I need to do. And so what I do is I set it up. I say the sine of 80 divided by 13.7, the sine of any angle divided by its opposite side is equal to the sine of any other angle, say 45, divided by its opposite side, which is, I guess this one's my x, which is y. And that will allow me to solve for y using proportions in my calculator. I can also set up and say the sine of 80 is to 13.7 as the sine of 55 is to x. So that's how you set up the law of sines. Notice the key here is that I have a pair. In side, 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 and side, angle, side, I don't have any pairs. In side, 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 I know the three sides, but I don't know the angle, so there are no pairs, so I can't set up the proportion for the law of sines. 
side angle side has the same problem even though I have an angle in two of the sides I don't know its opposite side I don't know the opposite angle don't know the opposite angle so those have to be law of cosine situations I think the law of sines is easier to use it also allows me to check my questions at the end but the law of cosines has to be used at least once in those two situations so I can get my pairs together all right now the key thing here is the caution I'm going to write this in red uh, the law of sines must find acute angles. Now, if you'll recall, a triangle can have at most one right or obtuse angle. So when you're going to deal with the problem, you're dealing with the law of sines, you can't use the law of sines to find or go after an obtuse or potentially obtuse angle. And that is, has something to do with the idea of sine, and it's something that I can't really explain to you here because it's actually a trigonometry concept. But this breaks down when you're trying to find an obtuse angle on a triangle, it's going to give you the wrong answer. There's a reason for the wrong answer, and I understand the wrong answer, and it doesn't make the law any less of a law. It just the law of sines has to go after acute angles. So keep that in mind in a situation where you're, where you're going after angles, and I'll try to show you uh, that uh, scenario uh, in a little bit when we get to finding angles. All right, so that's how it works, looking for pairs, set of a proportion, solve for the variable, set of a proportion, solve for the variable. If you're going after angles, which I'm not in this situation, I need to make sure that I'm going after acute angles. All right, so the first thing I want to do is use the law of sines to find some sides. So let's give some information here. Uh, let's say that this is 78 degrees. Uh, let's say that this is uh, 66 degrees. And let's say this side down here is 18 inches. Find the angle, find this side, find that side. All right, so we're going to use the law of sines to do that. All right, the first thing is I don't need the law of sines to find x. x is just simply a 180 rule thing. So if I go to my calculator, on would be good. 180 minus 78 minus... 66 is 36, so x is 36 degrees. Now I'm ready to set up the law of sines. Let's go after y first. So the sine of any angle, I know the 36 and the side across was 18. So the sine of 36 degrees divided by its opposite side, which is 18, is equal to the sine of any other angle, which in this case is going to be 66, since that's across the y, divided by its opposite side. So there it is, set up. Uh, for the law of sines. I like leaving these things together until I get to the ready, until I'm ready for the calculation. Um, what I can do is I can cross multiply y times the sine of 36 is equal to 18 times the sine of 66 divided by the sine of 36 and y equals 18 times the sine of 66 divided by the sine of 36, okay? So that's the calculation you need to make. So I'm going to my calculator, and I have a numerator, 18 times the sine of 66, close, close, divided by the sine of 36, close, enter. And now I'm going to want to store this in variable y, so I'm going to have that answer for later because I may need it. So 27.976. So y is approximately 27.976 inches. So here's one answer. Here's a second answer. Now I'm a little bit out of space here, so I'll have to squeeze in to finish the other side here. But uh, I'm going to use the law of sines again. The Pythagorean theorem doesn't work here, even though I have two sides, because this is not a right triangle. I could use the law of cosines. If you're more comfortable with the law of cosines, now that I have this side, I could use the side version of the law of cosines to figure out z. I'm going to use the law of sines. Now I'm going to be, you have to squeeze here a little bit, so you may have to squint on what it is that I'm writing. Anyway, the sine of 36 divided by its opposite side, which is 18. Try to always use numbers that you know were given to you in the problem. Try to avoid the calculated question answers if you can. In this case, I can. I can completely avoid it. Uh, but I still want that value, and I've got it stored in y, and that's equal to the sine of 78 degrees divided by z. Once I do my cross multiplication, I get z sine of 36 
is equal to 18 times the sine of 78. So z is equal to 18 times the sine of 78 divided by the sine of 36. And that's pretty close to my last calculation. So I actually think make things easy on myself and just edit that equation from 2 back. So it's 18 times the sine of 78 instead of 66. So 78, everything else is the same. So I'm going to store this in z. So I have those values 29.954. So Z is approximately 29.954. All right. So there's the law of sines, and this would be inches here. And my smallest side should be across from my smallest angle, and it is. My largest side should be across from my largest angle, and it is. So it's at least correct from that standpoint. I can actually check my answers now, and I can check my answers with the law of sines. And this is a really simple calculator calculation exercise. Um, Space-wise, and put it down here. The sine of 36 over 18 should be equal to the sine of 66 over what I calculated for y should be equal to the sine of 78 divided by what I calculated for z. So I'm going to go to my calculator and verify that. All right, the sine of 36 divided by its opposite side turns out to be 0 0.0327 or so. Now I'm going to go with the sine of 66 divided by y, so alpha y. And you'll notice I've got an exact match. And then lastly, the sine of 78 divided by its opposite side, which I stored in z. And it gives me the same value, so 0 0.0327. 0 0.0327. Oops. 7 is the calculated value. I do want to see that value. You don't have to write it three times, but I do want to know what your calculated value is so that I can compare and see what it is that you're finding. Just verify in your calculator that same value happens three times. So that's how you find signs with the law of signs. Right, as I head to my next slide here, I've got some information already stored here. We're going to use the law of signs to find some angles. In this case, this isn't side, side, side because I'm missing this side, and it's not side, angle, side because the set each is in the wrong place. The law of cosines does not apply. This is actually an SSA situation. I've made this one so it has an answer and it only has one answer. It's not the ambiguous case of the law of sines which we'll study later. So I just want to show you what's going on and how we go about uh, trying to figure out what the angles are. All right. Well, first things first, I only have one option here. This side and angle are known, so those have to be the opposites from each other. And I have to use the 44 here. Uh, in order to help out since 46 is bigger than 44 and this is an acute angle this will be acute as well so I don't have to worry about the place where the law of sines fails uh, to give me the obtuse values so I'm okay there I know why it's going to turn out to be acute so I set it up the sine of 72 divided by 46 is equal to the sine of y divided by 44 All right. I'm going to solve for that variable, so I'm going to cross multiply. Uh, 46 times the sine of y is equal to 44 times the sine of 72. So the sine of y is equal to 44 times the sine of 72 divided by 46. So y is the sine inverse. That's the opposite of sine. I'm just using algebra. 44 times the sine of 72 over 46, and that's exactly what I'm going to type in. So I'm going to move that over. So I want the sine inverse. I need the parentheses, the numerator, 44 times the sine of 72, end of numerator, divided by 46, end of sine inverse, enter. So that's a round y. So let me store that to y. Store that to y, please. 65.465 degrees, that's the measure of angle. That's how you go through and find an angle based on the uh, law of sines. Now to find x is easy enough. I can just use the 180 rule in order to figure out x. So 180 minus my last answer minus the 72 I already knew makes x 45.535. Let me store that in case I need it. To x 
42.535. So x is approximately 42.535. The last thing to do in this uh, question is to figure out z. Z, I can actually use the law of cosines, or I could use the law of sines. Since this is a lesson on the law of sines, I'm going to practice using the law of sines and just show you here. The sine of x divided by z, I know what x is, even though I'm just writing the variable there, is equal to the sine of 72 divided by 46. z is what I'm after. So z sine of 72 is equal to 46 sine x. So z is equal to 46 sine x divided by z. So I need both those. Oops, not that. Sine of. What did I do? Oh, sine x divided by the sine of 72. Sorry, I lost track of what I was doing there. So I can type that in. Numerator 46 times the sine of what I stored as x. Close, close. Divided by the sine of 72. Close, enter. So z is around 32.698. I'm going to store that to. Z, 32.968, so Z is approximately 32.968 inches. There's one answer. The second answer, degrees here, there's my third answer. I'm going to check this with the law of sines to make sure it's right. The sine of 72 over 46. You can do this with all triangles now, by the way, even if you solved it using the law of cosines, this is a way to check and make sure that the triangle is right, is equal to the sine of y over 44 should be equal to the sine of x divided by z. All right. So not much work there. This is really worth the, uh, the effort to check these things, even though you have to. It's definitely worth it to divide by 46, because I know this uh, triangle is right. 0 0.0207 is what I roughly had. Uh, so now I want the sine of y divided by 44, and there's my identical match. And lastly, the sine of what I stored for x divided by what I stored for z, and there's an identical match again, 0 0.0207 is my checking value, and all three of them check out there. All right. Uh, last idea here is just to ram home the idea of checking answers using the law of sines. It doesn't matter how I solve this problem, I'm not going to do the whole thing. But let's just say, for example, I want to use something in order to show you that this is, uh, this is not correct. So I'm just going to make up some numbers. Let's say uh, I do some calculating. This turns out to be 22, and this turns out to be 23, and this turns out to be 37, and this turns, I'm saying this is 119 degrees, this is 41 degrees, what does that make, 150, so that makes this one 30 degrees, so that's kind of sort of reasonable from the largest side across from the largest angle standpoint. The law of sines is going to prove these made up numbers don't work anymore. First of all, none of them are irrational, which would have to be the case anyway. Uh, but Going to that point, the sine of 119 over 37 is equal to, or should be equal to, the sine of 30 over 22 should be equal to the sine of 41 over 23. And this is not going to work, and that's the whole point, is just to show you that sometimes you can be given too much information. Like, for example, if I gave you four things on a triangle, you might be able to prove well, that fourth piece of information is too much. It can't be that value. This triangle is impossible. and be able to prove it's an tri impossible triangle. And you use the law of sines to prove that it's an impossible triangle. All right. So anyway, the sine of 119 divided by 37 produces 0.0236. Now, it'll break down right now, the sine of 30. If it doesn't break down, I'm going to be utterly shocked. Divided by 22, yeah. Not off by much. I did a pretty good job of picking those up, but it is off. At the third decimal place, they're off. And then lastly, let's do the sine of 41 divided by 23. Uh, I did a pretty good job picking them, but I am off. All three of these numbers are different, and therefore this triangle is impossible. It can't be true because the law of sines is not fulfilled. So that's the law of sines. You've got to look for opposites and opposite side and opposite angle set of your proportions. Solve for what's going on there. Make sure you keep exact values. Don't round until the end. 
and now you've got a way to check your triangle answers as you go through and do your work. You can know your triangle questions are right before you turn in the test. And that could probably be almost all of this test, so this is something that's really worth figuring out how to do. So, until next time, for the law of signs and all of mathematics, I bid you see ya.